Recently on one of my streams on Twitch, somebody came to my chat and asked me if I could redo my Windows settings tutorial that I did a long, long time ago. I learned a lot since then, so I'm going to go over just some of the things that I actually think offer some significant improvement uh, and also just some of the placebo things that have been mentioned a lot inside of the Windows settings just to help you have a more optimized system. This video should be fairly quick as I just have a few things that I want to cover for sure. Uh, there are more things that you could go into within the Windows settings, but there's basically uh, five or six things total that I want to go through. If this video helps you, please do hit the buttons down below, liking, subscribing. It genuinely does help a lot. I'm trying to hit 10K by the end of the year, so any support on that is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions, more importantly, about this video, please do either ask in the comments or in my Discord, which is the first link in the description down below. You'll be able to join in there and ask the nearly 2,000 members in there about any of your issues regarding gaming performance. Also, you can always ask me questions when I'm live streaming over on Twitch and YouTube, which I also have linked down below. It's on Fridays at 6.30 p.m. CST and on Sundays at 1.30 p.m. CST. But now that all that's done, let's just jump straight into it. The first place we're gonna go is in System to Display. And then we're gonna to wanna to scroll down all the way till we see graphics. I should have mentioned as well in the intro that we're doing this on Windows 11. Windows 10 might look slightly different and some options may have been moved around slightly that I'm discussing, but generally you should be able to find them fairly easily. Anyway, if you go to change default graphic settings in Windows 11, as you see right here, you're gonna be met with these two options right here, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and optimizations for Windows games. Windows? Window. Uh, Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling, or HAGS as I like to call it. Generally, what this is doing is basically switching the scheduling and queuing of work from the CPU being the CPU's responsibility to a piece of dedicated hardware that's on your graphics card. With that being said, if you don't have a GTX 10 series or RX 5000 series, but if you don't have those series of GPU that are on screen or higher or newer, then you can't use this setting. For gaming, it's honestly hit or miss. And if you follow my channel for my main game, which is Escape from Tarkov, then you know that it's even more hit or miss in there, like everything is with that game. However, the point of this, as said within the official Microsoft dev blog, is for it to be a seamless transition and for you not to even notice it in the first place. That's why generally I recommend just to run it on, unless you know of any specific issues that your system is having or any conflicts that you're having in terms of performance with this setting. Next up on the plate is optimizations for windowed games. Now, as you can see right here, it says reduce latency by using the flip presentation model. You don't really need to know the super hardcore details of this, but I will have a couple sources in the description that talk about this more. You can basically think of this like instead of making a sandwich on a different plate and then moving that sandwich to a new plate, that you're just building a sandwich on the plate that you're eating it on. I know that sounds really weird, but that's basically what's going on. It's reducing the amount of read or write calls from memory. So it's a great and easy optimization to take a hold of uh, if you're using windowed presentation or borderless presentation when you're gaming. Anyway, next up on the menu is actually in Windows Security. So if you are struggling to find that, uh, you can find it in the bottom right. Typically, you're going to have an icon for Windows Security here, but you can always search it up and launch it there. I'm going to go in there real quick. And inside of Windows Security, there's really only one setting you need to worry about in here, and that is core isolation. To get there, you're going to want to go to device security and you'll see core isolation right here. You wanna to go to core isolation details and disable memory integrity. What this does basically is it uses a virtualized environment for some of your key Windows processes to make sure that low level kernel drivers that might be malicious don't get access to key Windows features. However, by running that virtualized environment, it can significantly impact performance. If you have some sort of sense in the internet and you're fairly safe and you know what you're doing and you stay secure on the internet, you're all right with disabling this. Again, it's your personal preference if you'd like to take the security risk, but for the increased performance, I would highly recommend to disable memory integrity. I'll put the definition from the Microsoft support page of memory integrity on the screen now, if you'd like to read that. It has a really good analogy in there. So I've instead of just stealing it and saying it to you, I figured I would have it right there. Feel free to pause and read that if you're interested. After this, we're gonna be jumping out of these entirely. And we're gonna be talking about removing some background applications, which I have covered in previous videos and some recent videos, in fact, but I know there's gonna be some of you watching this video who haven't seen some of those. So 
to keep it short and sweet, I know you've probably seen that in Task Manager, you have startup apps and you've tried disabling as many as you can here, but you may not have known that there are actually places where some additional apps can be launched from that still start up with your computer, even if you're disabling some here. To find that page, all you have to do is hit Windows key and R on your keyboard, and then you're gonna to wanna to type in services.msc, and then you're gonna to wanna to hit enter, and that'll bring up this page. I'm gonna sort by name and then sort by startup type so that all of the automatic ones are listed here first. This will basically show you every single service, hence the name services, uh, that's running on startup. So a good bit of these you can see here are all running automatically. And so, for example, uh, if I wanted to stop this LG updater service from running in the background, if it was consuming resources, I would right click on it, hit properties, let's change the startup type to manual as such, and then hit stop. I would stop the task and then manual would make sure that if I wanted to launch this EXE, I could, but it won't automatically start up. But a good portion of these settings, or not settings, but services in the background, they aren't consuming that much resources. So if you, for example, combine this with looking in task manager to see like, okay, what tasks are taking a good bit of CPU usage here? You might be able to find some things in here that are auto starting up, but then you, you can disable. But of course, be careful with what you're disabling as for example, I don't want to disable my performance optimizer service for my AMD CPU, uh, it's fairly important uh, and stuff like that. Just make sure you know what you're doing and research what services you are disabling. Some of these, like I said, could give you some sort of performance boost as then you won't have these tasks running in the background, but some of these may not. They may not be that impactful at all. So uh, it is always nice to get rid of those additional background tasks though, regardless to just keep a clean operating system. You can also find some other things that are scheduled to, oh, anyway, you can find some extra things that are Anyway, you can find some extra things that are running in the background in task scheduler. These are just these scheduled tasks that are set to run on certain triggers. You can see the triggers over here. You're probably going to be brought to this page right here. And you just want to click on the task schedule library to be brought to this. And so you'll see basically a good bit of software that's scheduled to run at a certain trigger. So for example, this updater was scheduled to run at 6.31 PM every day. If you see anything in here that you would not like to run, like I did here, you can right click on it and just simply hit disable. For me, it's not saying that. So you would see right here, you would hit disable. That way it's not triggered to run on that given time. Again, though, make sure that you're just disabling things that you're okay with disabling. Next, I actually want to talk about Windows power plans. Uh, I know this is sort of a uh, contentious topic as when I was researching this, there was just basically a, 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 I mean, just frankly, a ton of crap. I mean, it was just, just endless sources of just, just pure, like he said, she said, um, and not really any deep dives about it. Um, and so with that being said, I do have my own recommendations, um, but I might make a separate piece that sort of dives into this more. Anyway, the power plan that you're going to want to run here does depend on a couple different factors, but most importantly, what CPU type you are running. This is future me here just because I don't like how this came out. And at the end of the day, I just want to do some more actual research on this before giving any firm recommendations. For now, use whichever one feels the best to you, as most of the difference will probably come in at the 0.1 and 1% lows. Uh, the only solid thing that I can tell you is that I know the AMD reviewer guide for the dual CCD AM5 CPUs, which I'll have on the screen. Uh, they recommended to use the balanced power plan. I, I don't know about any other CPUs at this time, but again, once I dig in deeper and look at the individual meanings for each setting inside of the power plans and use some apps to actually dig in and look at the values, I'll have a much firmer idea of what to recommend for performance. But generally it looks like for certain AMD CPUs, the balance profile is best. Uh, for otherwise, for some Intel CPUs, it looks like high performance is better, but no firm commitment there until I actually commit some research to that. So give me some time. The last thing I wanna talk about is the paging file, which you might've seen in some of my other videos. Uh, to access that, you just want to go to Windows key R and type system properties advanced, and that'll take you to this window right here. And once you have this booted up, you're going to go to the performance tab and then go to advanced where you will see the virtual memory tab. And that is the paging file. You can see right here, it basically tells you what we're going to be adjusting the area on the hard disk that Windows uses as if it was RAM. So uh, it is used fairly frequently, 
but it is most importantly used if you're, say, running out of memory as well. I tend to recommend for most users, unless they're specifically running out of RAM, to leave this as system managed. But the most important thing out of anything is to make sure that this is not set on a hard drive. So for example, if I had a hard drive here, I would make sure to set it as no paging file on that drive because that, as you could probably expect, is significantly slower than any of your SSD storage, especially if we're talking about PCIe 3.0 or 4.0 NVMe drives. Just make sure that this is set to system managed on whatever SSD you have on your PC. The last one, just as a quick side note, if you are trying to trim processes in Windows, I would highly recommend checking out Chris Titus Tech and his Windows 10 slash 11 debloating tool. It can really help you get rid of the unnecessary Windows crap and just give you a nice cleaner install. I highly recommend checking it out. I'm not gonna make a video on it myself because I think it just doesn't do it justice and he explains it a lot better since he's the developer of that tool. It's simple, no install required, and I, I couldn't recommend it more. I use it on my system uh, every time I build a new PC. So big shout outs to him. I'll have that linked in the description below. And yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions, make sure to ask me over on my streams. Like I said, Fridays and Sundays at the times that are on the, the screen. Jeez. Go in the Discord if you have any questions or leave them in the comments down below. And yeah, I'll see you soon for some more bigger projects and maybe some different games than Tarkov. And for now, this is Clem. Clocking out. Later. Thank you.